Hey everybody, Patton here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to play Wonderswan games on your mini system. This is one that I've wanted to cover for a while now. And if you're not familiar with the Wonderswan, it was a handheld released by Bandai. And it went from 1999 to 2003. It didn't sell a lot, so it never made it out of Japan. And with the Game Boy Color coming out before it and the Game Boy Advance released after it, it didn't really stand a chance. Nintendo just took over. But it is a neat system and a lot of the games have been translated in English. It was a powerful little handheld for its time. To recap on how to mod your mini in HackGCE, you want to go to the Kernel tab and install Repair. Click Yes. Plug your mini system into your PC. While holding down reset, power on, and hack you will do the rest. Once you see the green light in the bottom left corner, you are all set. If you need further instructions on how to get that done, I'll have my tutorial video in my description. You can also go to the help tab and join the Rock in the Classics Discord server or subreddit for help. Nothing special is needed to get these games run, you just need the appropriate core and the game files. So to begin with, we go to the modules tab and to the KMFD mod hub. Go to the KMFD RetroArch tab, select your version of RetroArch, click download module. Next go to the KMFD cores tab, scroll down just a little bit, and the core we're looking for is right here, the Mednafin Wonderswan. Highlight the core, once again click download module. Close out the mod hub, go back to the modules tab, and install extra modules. Put a check mark next to Mednafin Wonderswan and RetroArch, then click OK at the bottom. Once those have finished installing, you should get this done message. Now it's time to add our games. You can leave your games zipped. If they are not zipped, they should be in a .ws file type. We're going to highlight our games, drag them directly into HackG. If we take a look at the command lines, you can see they've been changed automatically for us to run with that core. Let's grab some box art real quick. All right, everything looks good. The last step is to hit this synchronize selected games with mini button down here or export to USB if you're using external storage. The games have been transferred over. Let's head over to the NES Classic and take a look. Let's jump into Final Fantasy IV first. Boots up just fine. And there it is. Mode 7, this is not, but this seems to be a pretty good port of the game. The music isn't half bad. It doesn't compare to the Super Nintendo version, but it still looks really good and it sounds nice. Our second game, Rockman and Forte. This one was released on the first Wonder Swan before it came in color. Can you really call yourself a Mega Man fan if you haven't played the Wonder Swan version? It's not too bad. I mean, Mega Man looks a little different from what I'm used to, but it seems really solid. It's running really nice. It's very smooth. The graphics are nice. I like the scrolling background. Mega Man looks really angry. I mean, he kind of always looks angry though, doesn't he? At least in the X series. But as you can see, both games started up fine. It's running great. Oh, I like those translucent effects. Very nice. Those are not what I was expecting. That is nightmare fuel. Also, an interesting feature of the Wonderswan was that you can play your games vertically. And you can do the same thing here. If you hit select on your controller, the screen changes vertically. I guess this was for some of the shooters that you may have had on the system. So just a neat feature if you do end up getting into this system. And that's all there is to it. Remember, if you need any help getting this to work, you can go to the Rock in the Classics Discord or subreddit and ask for help. And that's it for me. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.